If you heard this show or if you've been watching any of the national news, you know our mayor, Carol Goodman, has been in the news lately. Her interview with Anderson Cooper on CNN went viral. And in that interview, she mentioned the guest that we have on the line right now. In fact, she's mentioned him on several occasions. His name is Jeremy Aguero, and he's from Applied Analysis, a statistician, so to speak, and an expert when it comes to many of the issues that we're going to be talking about when it comes to the coronavirus. Jeremy, I appreciate you taking some time to join us, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. Uh, so, so this would be my first question to you. As you know, the mayor took a lot of flack uh, in talking about this possible placebo and using us as a, uh, a case study. And my question to you is, she, she said she did speak about that with some of the people uh, in her administration. Has she ever spoken to you or brought that up to you? I've had questions from the city of Las Vegas relative to the concept of having a control group early in this process, but not directly from the mayor, no. What do you think about that? What are your opinions on that? Do you think it would work, and do you think it's fair that some of the, uh, the flack that uh, the mayor is taking for bringing that up in that interview with Anderson Cooper? Yeah, look, I'm not going to comment on what's fair, what isn't fair. I think reasonable minds uh, can differ relative to any uh, set of facts, and certainly under the circumstances that we're in. Now, look, I, I think the mayor's heart is in the right place, right? She's trying to get the economy back open, and she's very, very concerned about small businesses. That having been said, you know, the concept of having, you know, one group of people in a metropolitan area like ours, and of course, that would be very difficult to actually um, uh, make happen because people are going to go back. Um, to their homes that aren't necessarily within uh, a physical boundary. And so that becomes very problematic uh, overall. Again, there, it, logistically, um, uh, I think it would be very difficult to, to make happen. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. All right, let's talk a little bit about the economy. Uh, a lot, you're obviously an expert when it comes to stats and, 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 and you know, hopefully foreseeing the future. We don't know exactly, uh, Jeremy, obviously, when the entire economy is going to reopen and when we'll have any sense of normalcy. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people are concerned. A lot of people are concerned. Am I ever going to be able to get back to work? It's the economy in Las Vegas, uh, across the country, of course, but particularly here in Las Vegas, is Las Vegas uh, going to be able to rebound from this? What can you say to the people, the good people here in Las Vegas about that and your thoughts of when you think things need to start to reopen or when and if they do reopen? Can the economy rebound from this? Look, I don't think there's any doubt that the economy can rebound. I mean, if there's anything that Las Vegas has proven itself, it's resilient and resourceful through a handful of economic downturns during most of our lifetimes and some well beyond them. We've survived floods and, and terrorist attacks and the unspeakable horror of 1 October, you know, and the Great Recession, right? And our economy finds its way back. I mean, what we're dealing with today may be the greatest challenge that we've had uh, in modern times, but we will find our way back from this overall. And look, I don't want to to discount anybody's concerns. I also don't want to try and um, uh, suggest that this is just okay. There are uh, nearly 400,000 people in the state of Nevada that have been displaced from their job. That's roughly one out of every four private sector employees have been displaced, and that is remarkable uh, both in, from an economic perspective but certainly from a historical perspective as well. In terms of getting back to that, what does it mean to sort of open up our economy the way that we're viewing this as really a continuum. We've got a public health crisis, we've got an economic crisis, we've got a fiscal crisis, and then I think at the back end of this we're going to have a legal crisis. And the reality is while everyone wants to try to put a calendar to it, it is not a function of time. It is a function of science. And when it's safe for us to be able to open those things back up, I think the, 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 our governor the, and, and other government and health care officials will allow that to happen. I think all of us want to see that happen sooner rather than later because of the economic toll this is taking. But the worst case scenario is not to extend uh, the closures for another week or another two weeks. The worst case scenario is to have to open our economy back up and then have to close it back down again. And I do think there are going to be fits and starts. There are going to be successes and failures. But being deliberate and thoughtful in terms of reopening our economy is what's critically important. Now, I, the other piece of that that I think is necessary to say is that we've been spending a lot of our t time and creativity trying to figure out how to get people to stay home. That has been good and effective, and I think the people of Nevada should be very proud of themselves for the way that they've handled that. It is time to start using our ingenuity in terms of figuring out how to get people back to work, and I think a lot of the dialogue has shifted that way in the last 10 days, and I expect to hear a lot more about that from um, both the governor's office as well as other officials nationally, uh, as well as here in southern Nevada, uh, not only over the next few days, but certainly over the next few weeks.
You mentioned uh, historical, remarkable numbers. Are, are you suggesting that Las Vegas could have one of the highest unemployment rates in American history at the end of this thing? Yeah, I'm, I'm not suggesting. I think we're already there. Right at the peak of the Great Recession, our unemployment rate was in the 13 to 14 percent rate. We are currently have an unemployment rate by our estimates of about 26 percent, which is uh, beyond anything in, in sort of modern times when sort of the similar data were being measured the same way. Um, that is a uh, phenomenally high rate, and we are already there. And I will tell you, I think that that is going to continue to get worse before it gets better. As the economy opens back up, um, many employees will be able to go back to work. However, um, there are going to be some that it's going to take some time for those jobs to be recreated. And for some, it's going to be a very long time until those jobs are, are, are come back online. And look, I think we also have to be realistic about the nature of our economy. A third, a full third of our economy is in leisure and hospitality here in Southern Nevada. That is way higher than almost anywhere else in the entire United States. And we right. think about, about 20% uh, of our visitors come from international points of origin. That's going to take time to come back. 16% of our visitors are convention, trade show, um, special event type uh, activity. Those are going to take longer to come back. They will eventually come back, but we, we have to get testing in place. We have to get past this critical uh, uh, hurdle from a, a public health standpoint in order to not only have uh, uh, you know, confidence among consumers to get on a plane or get in a car and come to Las Vegas. But the other piece of it that, that sometimes seems to be missed is that we are putting ourselves into a pretty serious economic downturn. And that means consumers are going to have less money, less disposable income to take trips to places like Las Vegas. Of course, uh, you, uh, to that point, you brought up, of course, Las Vegas and how unique we are here. Uh, obviously, you brought up the hospitality industry, which is, you know, is, is a, a monstrous force here, not just in Las Vegas, but across Nevada. So that that obviously, you know, and, and by the way, I'm a furloughed employee that happens to work full time on the Las Vegas Strip. So I'm well aware of uh, kind of the u unique dynamic that we have here and uh, how things are going to pan out as far as once we are able to go back to work. Right. This is, is it's it's not going to be like any other recession or depression in American history. Right. I mean, we're we're talking about something that is completely different when you're dealing with a pandemic. Yeah, look, first of all, I'm sorry that you're going through that. I'm sure it's difficult on you and your family, and, you know, I, I really hope you're able to get back um, to some degree of normalcy in terms of your job sooner rather than later. But the, the second part of your point, I think, is very, very well yeah. taken, right? I mean, yes, there are attributes that are similar to recessions. There's even attributes that are similar to the Great Depression or uh, to other challenges that we have a community or this nation has faced. There are things that make it similar, but there are things that make it entirely uh, make it very different as well, not the least of which is the speed to which this downturn happened and the magnitude of the downturn. I mean, the closure of our tourism industry altogether is something that we've never seen happen before. And let, let's let's be clear. And if we look at our economic curve, if you will, the, the point at which we are at the highest and the point at which we are at the lowest are essentially within 30 days of each other uh, from our economy. And this is something that, that is, is almost unfathomable from an economic standpoint. Jeremy, right now, the state of Nevada is very unique in that we don't have an income tax. We don't have a food tax. A lot of the money that is being spent is at the grocery stores on food. How is Las Vegas in particular bringing in tax revenue? Well, you're right. I mean, we're still bringing in tax revenue because we continue to have property tax, and some businesses are continuing to be open. We have payroll taxes and those type of things, business taxes that are out there. Um, but you're right. We are very, very dependent on retail sales and use tax in the state of Nevada, and that's going to drop like a rock. Uh, you know, we talked about it in terms of those four elements to this crisis, and the third of those elements was a fiscal crisis today. And I, I you know, the governor has asked uh, the departments to uh, kind of, uh, provide 4% cuts for this fiscal year, uh, and then substantially larger cuts going into fiscal 2021, which will start uh, July 1st of 2020. Um, the county and other local governments have uh, taken uh, substantial steps in terms of uh, starting to shore up their budgets and keeping that maximum flexibility. You know, it's a real balancing 
uh, uh, effort here, right? Because on the one side, you don't know how this is going to play out. Is it going, are we going to bounce back a little quicker than people expect? Is it going to be a little slower than people expect? And you don't want to lay off too many people. You don't want to lay them off too early. But at the same time, you don't want to wait because every day that you continue to make the, that, those payments, you're burning through cash. The other part of that calculus that I think is, is unique to this particular situation is the way that the CARES Act is structured. There are many employees employees that can actually make more money being on unemployment right. today than right. they would not being on unemployment. Now, there's a double-edged sword there that I'm sure you guys are, are pretty aware of. I mean, obviously, we want to get uh, people have a, an incentive to get back into that workforce. Right. But in the meantime, what we don't want to do is make it more difficult on families that have maybe had one person laid off or maybe could make a little bit more money doing sure. that as opposed to just sitting at home. Mm -hmm. Totally understood. If you're joining us, uh, we're joined here by Jeremy Aguero from Applied Analysis. Okay, Jeremy, this might be a tough question for you, but it's, it's a debate I have with people on, on a daily basis. As you know, you know, over 56,000 people have died in this country from the coronavirus. We're approaching 1 million. And a debate I hear from some other people is, well, look at how many people are going to die from, for example, because they're unemployed. Look at how many people are going to die from suicide. Look at how many people are going to die from substance abuse. And my... My debate, or at least my argument to that is uh, we shouldn't open up the country because of that. We need to make sure it's safe first before people go back to work. Can you talk to me, uh, even from a numbers standpoint, I know it's hard to do, but can you talk to me from a numbers standpoint? Is that a valid argument? We need to reopen the economy because of suicide and because of all these people unemployed, even if it may not be 100 percent safe for people to go back to work. Absolutely not. That's not a valid argument. And I think that you sort of gave the answer in the, in the way you framed the question, right? There were so many unknowns and still are today relative to the coronavirus that we have certain responsibilities for our community and for this economy. I mean, can you imagine what it would be like if the Las Vegas Strip became a hot spot where we were continuing to just right. do something different than what the balance of the nation was doing and sent people all over this world who were infected with a coronavirus that we didn't understand? I mean, th this would be could potentially be devastating for our economy. That, and the other side of that is, you know, I think we have some responsibility for all our first responders and the people that are working in our hospitals. The surges that we yeah. saw both out of this country and in, in this country in places like New York, I mean, you know, th th those were something that any, I think, responsible person would want to avoid overall. Now, I understand yeah. the argument, right? In our community, there are roughly, you know, a about a hundred people that have been unemployed for every person that is tested positive uh, for the coronavirus, and I realize that the ramifications on that on families and households and jobs and careers. Look, I have a daughter that 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 uh, was a senior uh, in high school, and it's been devastating for her to lose out on so many of those things. And, and that's m minimal in terms of the way that other people's lives have been affected, not being able to be with a loved one that's passing away and those type of things. These are these are devastating emotional things that are very very difficult for us. But if we had taken I am an absolute believer that but for the governor taking action to close down the Las Vegas Strip, that this pandemic for our community and our nation would have been substantially worse. And as I mentioned before, those concerns, that attitude notwithstanding, and those are reasonable things for people to think and do, but our creativity now needs to be shifted, not only away from figuring out how to keep people at home to figuring out how to get people back to work. This is what we had to do in light of the situation as it existed previously. Now we're really focusing our state's time, attention, effort, and expertise on figuring out how to get us back open. And I, I'm really glad we're making that transition. Now, Jeremy, we had a guest yesterday from the Bonanza Casino in Reno, Nevada, and he made an interesting argument. He said that you know 40% of the revenue in Nevada is, is based on gaming, the, the tax that comes from gaming. He argued that in Nevada, in Nevada only, that gaming should be considered an essential business. Does he have a legitimate argument, in your opinion? Yeah, look, I'm not going to discount anyone's argument as sort of being illegitimate. I, I think that's a dangerous argument to make, uh, however. Yes, you know, the reality is that b gaming is business like any other. Uh, it's also a business that requires people to convene in a certain area, which we know is an acute risk relative to this particular challenge, this public health challenge that we're saying. I, I, I think that um, while I, I, I don't disagree with the dependence 
uh, that he mentions relative to our economy as it relates to gaming and hospitality. He is absolutely right about that. But I do think that um, creating any situation where people are going to convene is irresponsible. I mean, if we're going to not let people go to churches because we don't want them all to get together, how do we say it's okay for them to go to casinos where they would do the same thing? Exactly. And I think there's a fine line between going to get food for your family and, and having the urge to play a slot machine. I'm sure we all would agree on that. Jeremy, let me say this. I'm, I'm really glad that uh, you are working with the mayor. You're an extremely intelligent guy, and uh, we appreciate you taking some time to join us this morning. Really some insightful information, and we hope we could have you on again sometime. Jeremy, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Yeah, you bet. Stay sa- safe and stay well. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you yeah, very much. Lot, Jeremy. It's Jeremy Aguero from Applied Analysis, really smart guy, and I appreciate the fact he did not make it about politics. He answered every single question honestly. He gave credit to Governor Sislak, as I have from day one, in doing what he did in in closing the strip when he did. And he also said it's not a fair comparison to talk about suicide. It's not a fair comparison uh, to talk about people that might have drug issues. It's sad, don't get me wrong, it's terrible, but that's not a valid reason for opening up the economy. Uh, That's what he said. Smart guy. I agree with him on that. And uh, he said a lot of things.